Hey everyone, this is our uh, sprint release video for the digital experience group for the product marketing team for July 28th. Um, and we have a few people out uh, designed, so let's uh, get started with Nathan. Yeah, I can jump in. Um, what am I up to? So there was two surprise releases. There was version 2.0.15, which should have been 2.1. Uh, and then there was 2.1, which I just released today. And so there's a lot of changes in those. Um, you can check them out. I post them in the digital experience uh, Slack channel. So they're both there. Uh, I looked into the, um, the Figma storybook plugin. Um, I spoke with Jess today about it and it looks like we might try it out. So we're not going to set up automation to like to build it and to do all the accounts and everything, but we might just set it up, see how it works. Um, so this would allow us to bring in storybook components and their variants into Figma. So it allowed design to kind of compare them easier. Um, and then they could also use them in the designs if they want to. Um, also went pretty, I was going to say pretty ham, but I don't know if people understand that. <laughs> I went wild on the uh, www repo. So I deleted a ton of old features and pricing stuff. So a lot of old like experiments. There were so many YAML files that were like for, I don't know what they were. They weren't used. So hopefully nobody, <laughs> nobody comes back. It's been so far so good. Uh, it should make things easier though, because I've noticed that there's been a lot of changes to the old pricing FAQ YAML, which doesn't exist anywhere because we don't use the pricing FAQ page. So I created a new issue. Um, it's set up for like that pricing team, that conversion team for next iteration uh, to go back and update the pricing FAQ with all the changes that have happened in the last who knows how long. Um, also that side nav is in, it's currently on the support page. Um, and I think Gabby's going to bring it into a page she's working on maybe this iteration or next. And yeah, I also added kind of process for slippers, um, releases. So now there's an Epic that houses all the releases inside the release. You have the release notes and then there's two blocking issues. So that's the import and the publish, um, and they all have links in there. So it was a lot, but that's it for, for me. Um, Margaret, do you want to go next? Yep, uh, so I work on the features landing page. Um, currently, I need to uh, make some updates. As Nathan discussed, we're still figuring out things with the features um, YML file. So I need to update that. I also worked on migrating the continuous delivery page. Um, I have an MR in place for that already. So I just need uh, some review from Jess since Tina is uh, a little bit busy. So I think that's it for me. Um, I guess Mateo. Okay, um, so I took my vacations this iteration, so it was a short one for me. I picked up a bunch of one pointers, uh, typography updates in solutions, features, and missing images and icons on some topics pages, and also adding a new CTA button to the header in the topics pages. And that's it for me. Next one, Javi. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, this iteration, I worked on adding GA4 tag to the head of the product. It got merged in. I'm just looking on waiting on Dennis because he's blocked on something to see if it actually works live in production. Um, it, I'm just pulled up his comment just to see one trust is blocking GTM's preview mode from firing if a user doesn't consent to the performance cookie. So we have to wait on that one. Uh, I worked on enhancements that's still in review app for the uh, for the enterprise and small business page. Um, it's that little like other side nav. <laughs> Maybe we come up with better names for that stuff. But uh, uh, working on that, and then worked on adding documentation to the launch darkly experiment. I got word from support that we should be able to run an experiment now. I have to actually try it, but hopefully that'll work and i did start on the data later events for the sas trial flow um didn't get very far with that as i was focused with some of the other mrs but i was hoping to get that finished up before tyler gets back so that's it for me i think that's all of us and so i might hop back in i forgot to i want to show some we did some research on the features page and so just whoever watching this might be uh this might be interesting so i'm just going to share my screen real quick there, hopefully everyone can see this. 
Um, so yeah, there was a spike to investigate features YAML. As everyone knows, features YAML is like 11,000 lines. It's massive. Um, and so I just wanted to understand how it's used, who's using it, and why it's used. Um, and so just some interesting things. I looked at the, bat, the, the last 20, I guess the history of the edits for this page. Uh, there's 18 unique contributors. So it's not the same people that are updating it. Uh, 12 are from products, six from engineering. Um, and then this is what they were doing. They were adding features, removing features, modifying features. And then one interesting thing I learned is uh, the PPS scores. And so PPS scores are updated every quarter. They're called the perch post purchase survey. And it's kind of the results of the survey. And I, from my understanding, it's kind of how well features are doing or why people buy the product. And so it's really valuable information. And I think we've kind of forgotten about it when we migrated the new feature stuff over. Um, and so it was interesting just seeing the insight into to how this file is being used. And a lot of the added features modified or removed are almost one-to-one -one with the release notes. So when we release features get updated and I never really thought about it. So I'm curious if there's a way we can also automate when they do the release post that we could somehow add the features to the, the file as well. Um, there's just some related resources. So just random files that talk about features YAML. Uh, and then these are the ones that are actually reading features YAML. So there's a bunch still in dub. There's actually two of them that are used by product to uh, just understand, I guess, what's in features YAML or kind of visualize it. And so there's by theme and paid tier. And I can try and show them here. There's bars in the way. And it's pretty cool. I guess it, it just reads the file, grabs all the scores, rates them by the highest, groups them. They do all sorts of fun stuff. And there's also this one, like what plans things are a part of, what stage they're a part of. And so I'm wondering if there's a, a place here where we can kind of work with products to maybe help them visualize this better and maybe get, I don't know, make this easier for everybody. Uh, maybe bring it to buyer experience because one day I think this all is going to go to buyer experience and then a bunch of pricing pages. And then one interesting thing I know I learned, there's 116 unique properties in that file. And so what was going on in the past is that all the competitors, like as small, big, we were checking if they had a lot of these features. And so we would check, there's a Boolean that says like true or false. And we don't use it anymore. Like now, if you look at our feature comparison page, there's only like Bitbucket and like the bigger, bigger competitors. And so I asked if we can remove them. And I think it's just bubbling up now to, to whoever's in charge. But if that's the case, we can remove probably around 2000 lines um, from that file. And then we can remove another thousand lines from, there's another field that is like, is it free? Is it premium? Is it ultimate? And so obviously if something's ultimate, then it's free and pre or like it, it has all the, the fields underneath it, all the plans underneath it. So instead of having three or four Booleans, we could just have one that's like an enum that just accepts like the plan. So I think there's a lot of immediate cleanup we can do, um, at least get it down by like 30%. And then later on, we can, can find maybe a, a longer term solution. But yeah, hopefully this was interesting. Uh, these were the findings and then we'll come up with an action plan for, for going forward. I don't know if anyone has anything else to add to that, but yeah, I think that might be it for our demo. Please like, comment, oh. and subscribe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Next time we'll have uh, some some of Javi's ETM music playing in the background. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, if that's it, uh, I'll stop yeah. recording.